Welcome to Go Racing TV. We're here at Thurless, and with me is the Gold Cup winning jockey, Davy Russell, who had a remarkable change of fortunes at Cheltenham uh, just over a week ago. And Davy, has it all sunk in yet? Just about nowadays. Yeah, get the colours back on another winter's day. It is great. Well, I was just going to say you're wearing your best shirt at the moment. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, I'd nearly sleeping at this stage. Well, it was a remarkable change of events uh, going to Cheltenham. I suppose the, the fact that uh, there were changes at Jigginstown meant that you didn't have the uh, book of rides that one would anticipate that you would be looking forward to winners. And uh, with a couple of days gone past and heading into the final day, both you and Jigginstown had a blank. And then, of course, one man's misfortune is another man's fortune, the nature of the game. And, of course, I refer to Brian. Yeah, of course. Look, Brian got a nasty injury and, and nobody wants to see that happen to anybody. Um, and I was speaking to him last night and uh, he's in good spirits and you know hopefully it's not as bad as what they first um, thought and all our thoughts went out to Brian especially even riding the winner but uh, for me then on the day uh, it was great to get the call up from Gordon uh, to ride toy Tiger Roll and he was quietly confident that he'd run a big race and he'd reverse the leopard sound farm and you know from the top of the hill that's all he needed to do was get out in front of Desi's horse and uh, he done done it well, picked up well at the back of the last and stayed well and you know that was the start of a good day. So the triumph hurdle over, Davy Russell is on the board, so is Jigginstown, so everybody is happy but it gets an awful lot better than that. We move on then to the Gold Cup and Lord Windermere, uh, halfway in the race it looked as if you were just participating in the Gold Cup, never envisaging that you were going to win. Yeah, uh, myself and Jim kind of had a plan. We, we rode him in Leperstown, maybe a bit closer to the pace to find out on that day that that wasn't the way to ride him. So we'd always intended dropping him, dropping him in. Uh, maybe not quite as far. I kind of kind of took that on to myself. But the one thing that was always in my mind was he was jumping so well and I had loads of horse left only to get him close enough to, to use to use the petrol that I'd saved. And uh, obviously coming down the hill, I was maybe just hanging on to their coattails, but still hadn't gone from him. And I knew off the final bend with the kick over the last two, um, the way he jumps, you know, he was very quick over the last two, landed at the back of the last and sprinted to get to the front and just held fire with me a little bit and pricked his ears. And obviously they drifted over across towards uh, David Casey's horse once he saw Silviano Conti coming towards him. And uh, we passed the line in front and uh, we had the big deal of uh, Stuart's inquiry then after that. And, you know, um, we, we survived that, thank God. Well, that would have been a total disaster altogether if you were to lose in the stewards' room. Was there any anxiety during the inquiry? Uh, no, like I was always confident that I, I was riding the best horse in the race. And, you know, I'd say if he didn't hang fire and start breaking his ears, I, I would have went away to win quite causally because get, getting to the line, I still had plenty of horse left. And I, I always felt maybe that the stewards were going to take the view that the best horse won the race. And uh, that's the way it turned out. And, of course, another Irish horse second, David Casey, on his own. Yeah, that's right. And would you believe the two horses were only bred within three or four miles of each other, blown cock. So it's an amazing story. And again, I'm from five miles in the road from where they were bred. So it's a real local local um, success down in, down near y'all. So then to finish it off, riding the last winner of the meeting with Savello. Yeah, I rode him out all week. And uh, he was a bit quiet in himself. He's a very highly strong horse. And uh, Tony just said, you know, he was happy with him. And the last, the morning of the race, we rode him out. He was in great fettle. He took all the preliminaries very well and he travelled very well through the race. I still had plenty of horse coming down the hill and got two good jumps at the last and I knew that he'd stay well. There was one thing that I had in the back of my head that he would stay to the line and he, he, he rightly did. Um, Tony had done such a super job with him to try and calm him down for, that, for such an event like Cheltenham and uh, he'd done it so well. Well, a fabulous Friday and congratulations on a marvellous victory. Uh, you've been a very, very consistent, top-class jockey for many years. I'm sure it was everybody's dream to win a Gold Cup and you've done it. Yeah, thanks very much, Des. It's great. Well done, Davy, and thank you very much.